What is the difference between mammoths and elephants? When it comes to mega herbivores, they don't get more mega than the massive mammoth and the enormous elephant. Yet, despite their shared bulk, trunks, and other traits, there are still significant differences between the two. And in today's video, we're going to take a look at them. By the end, you'll have a better understanding of these magnificent and ancient relatives. So where did they come from? How long have they been around? What did they eat? Who was bigger? All of these questions and more are about to be answered. With that, let's get started. Classification A mammoth is or was any species within the Mammuthus genus, of which there were several. In turn, Mammuthus is under the Elephantidae family, along with modern-day elephants and other extinct elephantids like Stegoloxodon, Primelophus, Selenotherium, and Paleoloxodon. The word mammoth comes from a native Siberian term for earth horn. The earliest fossils, frozen carcasses, and other remains were found in Siberia in the 17th century. Native folk tales explore various aspects of the animal's relationship with early humans, including how they were regarded and respected as water spirits. One of the earliest Westerners to document evidence of mammoths was Scottish explorer John Bell, who ventured to Siberia in 1722. Bell bought a tusk from a local community and had it verified as an elephanted tooth by Sir Hans Sloane, another big name in British exploration and discovery. Since then, tens of thousands of mammoth remains have been unearthed in Europe, Asia, North America, and Africa. Many places in the world also feature cave and rock paintings depicting mammoths, which provides further evidence of their incredibly broad range. Now, we know there are at least 10 mammoth species. Of these, the woolly mammoth, Mumathus primigenius, is the most well-known, largely due to its prolific appearances in the media, films, books, TV shows, and cartoons. In comparison, the African elephants, Loxodonta africana and Loxodonta cyclotus, and Asian elephants, Elephus maximus, we have today, hail from the Loxodonta and Elephus genera, rather than Mammuthus. However, several physiological traits, including skeletal structure and ear size, suggest that Asiatic elephants are more closely related to mammoths than to extant African species. It is also important to clear up the confusion surrounding mammoths and mastodons. Mastodons were not mammoths. In fact, they weren't even elephantids. They actually belonged to a separate proboscidean family called Mammutidae. Well, that's a topic for another video. Proboscidean is what we call any animal from the proboscidae order. These days, Elephantidae is the only living family in this order, with all others long gone. The term proboscidae is a derivative of the ancient Greek word proboscis, which loosely translates to elephant's trunk. Evolution The proboscidae order is estimated to be at least 55 million years old, which means these animals' ancestors first emerged during the late Paleocene. In other words, only 10 or so million years separated the rise of the elephant ancestors and the demise of the dinosaurs. Early proboscideans lived along the African coast off the Tethys Ocean, which is now known as the Mediterranean Sea and the Indian Ocean. The earliest known proboscideans were Erytherium and Phosphotherium, and fossil evidence indicates they were semi-aquatic. A bit later, during the Eocene, Moritherium, Pneumotherium, and Barotherium showed up in Africa. These animals had four proper legs, but evidence like their forearm bone structure and nasal cavities suggest they were still semi-aquatic, kind of like modern-day hippopotamuses. During the Miocene, a period stretching from 23 to about 5 million years ago, the world changed. Tectonic plate movement brought Africa and Eurasia together via the Arabian land bridge. Given this new avenue, proboscideans began moving north into Europe and Asia. A little while after that, Another land bridge formed. The Bering Land Bridge, which joined Siberia and North America, allowed migration to the New World. As the world changed, so did the proboscideans. Various animals spawned all over, especially in Africa. One of these would go on to become the common ancestor of the mammoths. The oldest mammoth species, Mammuthus suplanifrons, lived during the Miocene between 6.2 to 5.3 million years ago. Its range was mostly limited to East and Southern Africa. Fossil evidence shows that Suplanifrons may have coincided with Mammuthus africanivus, another notable species from 5 to 2.58 million years ago. As for Eurasian mammoths, 
Mammuthus rumanus, is believed to be the oldest on record. It later evolved into Meridionalis, better known as the Southern Mammoth. Later, around 1.7 million years ago, Meridionalis evolved into Trogantheri, the Asian steppe mammoth. After the formation of the Bering Bridge, some steppe mammoths made the voyage to the New World and diverged into new species like Mammuthus columbi, the Colombian mammoth. The steppe mammoths that remained in Eurasia, particularly Siberia, would later shrink and evolve into Mammuthus primigenius, or woolly mammoth. Of course, as we already know, some of these woolly mammoths also crossed the land bridge and made it to the Americas. Whether in Africa, Eurasia, or the Americas, mammoths thrived and quickly dominated the landscape. Their ecosystems often featured a bunch of other herbivorous creatures, as well as dangerous predators that posed a significant threat to mammoth calves, if not full-grown adults. Of course, with time, humans would come on the scene and alter the destinies of mammoths on all three continents. Humans hunted mammoths for their food, pelts, oils, tusks, and bones. It would not be surprising if there was also an aspect of glory or rites of passage associated with hunting them. There was also the issue of self-preservation on the human's part. After all, mammoths were very dangerous animals that could easily maim or trample people. With sharp minds and even sharper weapons, humans managed to wreak havoc on mammoths and diminish their numbers. Mammoths eventually went extinct around 3,700 to 4,000 years ago, with the last specimens living on Russia's Wrangel Island. That means Egyptian civilization was already up and running by the time the last mammoths died, which is pretty cool and kind of sad too. While the mammoths were out conquering the world, another proboscidean branch descended from animals that remained in Africa following the emergence of the Arabian Bridge bore a different kind of fruit. This was the Gumphotheres family, which featured a bunch of wild and wacky elephant-like creatures, big and small. About 10 million years ago, Gomphotheres diverged and spun off into animals that gave rise to modern elephants of the Loxodonta genus. Asian elephants, meanwhile, come from animals that split off from African mammoths around 7 million years ago. The first Elephos elephants emerged sometime during the Pliocene, around 5 million years ago. They would later move north into Eurasia, diverging into different species. The modern Asian elephant, Elephus maximus, is believed to have evolved from Elephus hysidricus. Size When it came to size, mammoths actually varied greatly. How do they stack up against modern elephants? Well, let's see. The African bush elephant, Laxodonta africana, is the biggest elephant species we have today. Females are smaller, being anywhere between 7.2 and 8.5 feet tall at the shoulder, and weighing between 4,750 and 7,125 pounds. Males, or bulls, can be more than two-thirds larger, with shoulder heights between 10 and 13 feet, as well as weight ranges of 10,000 and 13,400 pounds. The heaviest elephant on record weighed 22,900 pounds and stood just over 13 feet tall. The tallest ever was 13.8 feet at the shoulder and weighed 18,000 pounds. These numbers place the African bush elephant within the woolly mammoth's general size ranges. The woolly mammoth reached a maximum height of 11 feet and a maximum weight of 13,200 pounds. Some may have been bigger, but we have insufficient evidence of this. That said, the woolly mammoth was not the biggest mammoth species ever, not even close. The southern, steppe, and Colombian mammoths were much larger than their woolly kin in any modern elephant. Bull steppe mammoths grew to 13 feet at the shoulder and weighed around 24,000 pounds. Females were smaller but still much larger than female elephants. Colombian mammoths in the Americas were also bigger than elephants, with bulls that typically reached 12 feet in height and 20,000 pounds in weight. The largest elephanted tusk on record belonged to a Colombian mammoth too. This tusk is a whopping 16 feet long, which suggests that 12 to 14 foot long tusks were probably the norm. The biggest woolly mammoth tusk on record is 13.1 feet long. In comparison, the longest African elephant tusk ever was 11.4 feet long, which is still pretty impressive. That said, despite being known for great size and presence, not all mammoths were giants. 
A few species, like Mammothus creticus, better known as the Cretan dwarf mammoth, were tiny as far as elephant tits go. Creticus evolved as a result of insular dwarfism. In other words, being isolated on an island forced this mammoth to develop a smaller body so it would have lower caloric and energy requirements. As a result of this, this little mammoth was 3.3 feet tall and seldom over 400 pounds. That means it was even smaller than some especially large humans. Other key differences It's pretty clear that mammoths and elephants had a lot in common. For instance, mammoths and Asian elephants both have a sloping skeletal structure, with their front legs a bit longer than their hind legs. Mammoths and Asiatic elephants also share similar dentition, flat molars made for grazing. Additionally, they both have relatively small ears and bulbous domed heads. Most of the stark differences are between mammoths and African elephants specifically. Unlike their slope-backed cousins, African elephants have concave backs. Their front and hind legs are pretty much equal in length, giving them a more balanced look. Additionally, the foreheads of African elephants slope gradually and are not bulbous. Next, there are the ears. African elephants have much bigger ears than mammoths and their Asian cousins. For mammoths, small ears were likely a defense against the biting cold of the Ice Age. In contrast, big ears help African elephants cool off in the blazing heat of Africa. Many mammoths were full-on furry, like bears or cats, with some species even sporting double coats to protect themselves from freezing climates. Elephants have plenty of short bristly hairs, but these are not concentrated, which gives them a nude appearance. There are dental differences as well. African elephants have pointed, diamond-shaped molars for slicing and dicing fruits and leaves, not flat ones for eating grass. Then there is geographic distribution. Mammoths were able to settle in Africa, Eurasia, and the Americas, thanks to land bridges connecting the old and new worlds. Modern elephants, meanwhile, never made it to the Americas by themselves. Despite their many differences, mammoths had one key similarity to African elephants, specifically the finger-like extensions on the trunk. Mammoths had two of these fingers like African elephants. Asian elephants, in contrast, only have one.